Greetings everyone and welcome to the 110th session in the Power Virtual User Group technical webinar series. You can find details and replays of all the past sessions on the PowerVug info page at ibm.biz slash PowerVug. I'm excited to have not one but two experts to deliver today's session. And today's session will be on Power VM features in Power 10 systems, as well as HMC version 10, CMC, the Cloud Management Console, and Enterprise Pools 2.0 enhancements. So I will let Pete and Harry introduce themselves in a moment. And uh, just a quick reminder to our participants that if you have questions or comments, please enter them via the chat window. So without any further delay, let me hand over to Pete and Harry. Thank you. Hi, I'll, I'll introduce myself and then I'll let Harry introduce himself and then we'll get started with the Power VM overview session. So my name is Pete Hireman. I work on the Power VM hypervisor team. Um, I've been here since we converged the IBM I and P series uh, hypervisors together. So that's a long number of years. So I've been here since the inception of it. Uh, I work on uh, live partition mobility, performance, um, a little bit in security and configuration. So that's kind of my background. Ari, would you like to introduce yourself? Thank you, Pete. Hi, everyone. Uh, good morning, good evening, uh, from wherever you are joining in. I'm Hari. Uh, I work on the systems management area. Uh, I lead the HMC, CMC, and Novalink development teams. Thank you, Pete. Back over to you. Okay, so I'm going to take you through some enhancements that uh, are part of the, you know, that came with the announce of Power 10, and then I'll take you to through some uh, other changes uh, that also are part of this an announcement. So new features, um, live partition mobility, just to refresh her, normally the way that we, we've always done LPM is we support N minus two releases. So if you are uh, moving to power 10, you will be able to seamlessly migrate from power eight or power nine servers. Um, that said, there's no direct support for power seven or earlier servers. So if you do have clients on older servers, you need to move uh, twice. So you have to move to a Power 8 or Power 9 server and then migrate again to Power 10. So that's pretty much business as usual. We, uh, we uh, are able to, you know, um, we can't continue to support every old release forever and ever just due to the testing cost. So that's why we, over time, we deprecate some of those uh, older models. Uh, one new feature that we've added is uh, the way it used to work in the past with an optical device, a virtual optical device, is if you had one configured, then LPM and remote restart would fail. You'd get an error message and we would, uh, we would uh, fail the attempt. Um, we have now enhanced that support such that with LPM or remote restart, as long as there's no physical media that's in the device, so you're accessing it, um, we allow LPM and a remote restart to uh, continue. Uh, this has been a real problem for IBMI customers because they frequently use the virtual media. Um, so that's why we did this. Um, the, these changes are in the VIOS. So there's no HMC or firmware changes. So because they're in the VIOS 3.1.3 level, you don't have to have a Power 10 system to take advantage of this new enhancement. Uh, the next uh, enhancement I wanted to talk about was the um, mover server partition. Currently today, when you do live partition mobility, the, there is no consideration to the speed of the adapters. Let's say you have a one gig, a 10 gig, a 40 gig. There is no consideration of the speed of the adapter, uh, the type of connection, whether it's a direct connection, 
between the two MSPs on the source and the target or whether it's SEA and there's no consideration of the traffic that you, the LPM traffic you've already started up on them. So we're not really optimizing the use of the resources, the network resources for moving the partition. So we made a change with the announce of P10 that now the HMC does some determination based on the uh, physical attributes of the adapter to try and choose the fastest adapter, take into account the connection that you're using, you know, direct would certainly be faster than SEA, and then figuring out how many migrations are really already dispatched to um, a different link. So if you're doing concurrent migrations, we take those different migrations that are already in progress into account. And again, these changes are in the HMC and the VIOS. So you don't, you can take advantage of these right now on, on, on systems where you can install those. Uh, I want to talk a little bit about compatibility mode. So whenever we roll out a new server, there's a compatibility mode that you set. This allows you to migrate back and forth between uh, common generations. Um, so if you want to migrate from power eight to power 10, you're going to be running probably in power eight compatibility mode. Um, power 10 compatibility mode, of course, is only allowed on power 10. Uh, this, in essence, unlocks some of the new instructions. So there's single instruction, multiple data, they call SIMD type instructions. Those are available in Power 10, those are new additions. There's new crypto support. Uh, there's new set of load store instructions. Um, there's support for RADIX hardware page tables. And then the, the point is all of these new features are there in P10, but you need your applications or the operating systems to take advantage of using these. It's pretty much automatic with the uh, operating systems. They'll take advantage of these new crypto instructions, for example, when they're available. But some of the applications might want to take advantage of these, and those will require upgrades in order to really get the full advantage of some of the new Power 10 features. Um, when you're running in a compatibility mode, things like energy saving, the strength of the core, the caches, all of this, all of these new features that went in the Power 10 hardware available in all compatibility modes. It's really just the list at the top there that, that are unlocked with the Power 10 compatibility mode. Um, are there new releases of C and C++ compilers to take care of Power 10? Yes. They are rolling out new versions of those to take advantage of these new instructions and optimizing to use the new instructions where they make sense. That was in the chat. Um, as far as planning for Power 10, uh, the first block up here lists, if you have physical I.O. assigned to the partition, then you need to be seven, you need to be running AIX 7.2. Uh, technology level five or technology level four, and I listed the service pack there. Um, if you're running it as a pure virtual, so no physical I.O. in the partition, there's a list there of AIX releases 7.2 and 7.1 that are supported. Um, AIX, as many of you know, have released a statement of direction for 7.3 support. And, one more thing I want to mention about AIX is they have a feature that was added in Power 10 that's called update access key. So when a customer buys um, software maintenance or SWAMA, um, those have like an expiration date assigned to that. So when you buy it, normally you buy it for a hardware serial number basis. When we reach that expiration date, um, the HMC and AIX will remind you that you're running uh, your support contract is in close to an ending. We don't block it from running if your support expires. It's just a reminder because many customers, you know, if they run into a problem late at night and then they find out they don't have support, then before IBM normally helps them as they have to get their contracts all in place and stuff like that. So 
This is just a new feature that was added and it's in the firmware, it's in the HMC, and it's in EIX. And it only applies to AIX, it does not apply to the VIOS or IBM I. Um, on Power 10 VIOS, the level we support is 31310. Uh, Linux releases. So here is a list of all the Linux releases that are supported in Power 10. Um, these are what's available now. And then over time, of course, just like AIX, there'll be additional releases supported as uh, new ones come up. I did want to mention that the newer releases of AI of Linux support what we call a Radex hard, hardware page table. So um, Radex is more of a tree-based structure. The hardware page tables are really a mapping from the virtual addresses used by the partition to the physical real addresses used by the hardware. So whenever AIX touches AIX or Linux or IBM I touches a logical address, the hardware goes through these page tables to uh, access the data. So the Radex is a tree-based structure. This is more common in Linux implementations than the hash version of the table, which we've had before in Power 9 and earlier. So when you're running with Radex, that, that's a new Power 10 feature. It, in, as time goes on, there'll be more and more enhancements added to the Radex support for Linux. Um, slight performance benefit, I believe, with the Radix page table. Of course, this is only allowed in P10 mode because it only works on P10, and you can't uh, run this on older versions because it's actually a new hardware feature. And then IBM I, there's a couple of releases here that are listed that run on this. Um, most of these um, operating systems, if you try and run an older version of the operating system, the partition won't boot or the partition won't be able to mi live migrate to a new Power 10 server. So we catch that as you try and activate the partition or boot the, boot the partition or LPM the partition. All right, that's pretty much a wrap up of what was new. Most of the focus from the firmware team was just getting the hardware um, running. So there isn't a whole, there wasn't a whole lot of new features that were introduced. New features will be rolling out once all the new model uh, support is done. Uh, if you look at the hypervisor, really it's, it's kind of an abstraction layer between the operating system and the hardware. So whenever new versions of hardware come out, most of the firmware time is spent updating this abstraction layer so that the operating systems don't have to ripple changes all through there. So I wanted to take you through a list of discontinued features. Um, Whenever we introduce a new version of, of a hardware platform, it's a great time to reflect on what features are in the uh, system and what features you know, may not be being used by customers. We thought of things that were great ideas and we thought they would get a lot of usage and then we go back and look at the data and we find out that there isn't a lot of use of the features. And so I'm gonna take you through some of these that we've dropped. Um, we do a pretty detailed analysis on this. Um, we rely on call home data. So we got, we have a very, uh, a, a very robust call home support where we track which different features are being used in the field. And so we have some statistical data when we go to uh, enhance or retire a feature. And a lot of that is based on call home data, what user, different user groups we meet with, say about the features, and then one-on-one -on -one discussions with customers. Um, as you can imagine, you know, if you keep adding more and more and more features, IBM still has to maintain all those old features. We have to test all those. So again, we look at features that have low adoption rates and we, we will drop those from our current offering. So I'm gonna take you through some of the drops that occurred with Power 10. Uh, active memory sharing, or we call it AMS, the short form, today is a way to group a set of partitions together and they can share a pool of memory. 
So instead of assigning a fixed amount of memory to individual partitions, there's a pool of memory that is shared by multiple partitions and uh, they, they page in and out of this using the VIOS. Um, you have to set up something we call paging spaces, which are really disk storage through the VIOS, where when we, if your memory is over committed in the pool, we take the data that's in memory, page it out to disk, and then page it back in. So just like an operating system would page things out, uh, we do the same thing with active memory sharing. The, uh, when you get over committed in this, the performance really degrades because you can imagine the applications are built around memory access times and they're not running anywhere near that if they're over committed, they're running at the speed of whatever storage is backing the paging of the memory. So SSD is better than disk, but it, it, it's a very noticeable impact. Um, we looked at the call home data and of all the VMs that reported into IBM, uh, a quarter of 1% were actually using this AMS technology. Um, most of that, those VMs were running on Power 8 servers and very few were on Power 9. Um, AMS is a very expensive thing for us to support. So it in essence doubles our testing efforts because everything we test, we have to run with dedicated memory and shared memory. So starting in P10, we are dropping support for AMS. That said, the HMC, because it will manage a Power 9 or Power 8 server, still will allow AMS configuration and stuff. So you can, you can upgrade to P10 if you're using AMS and still manage it on your Power 9 and Power 8 servers. You just can't create new partitions or migrate new partitions to uh, Power 10. And again, to prepare for this, the, the real change here is you need to change to dedicated memory instead of using this AMS technology. Uh, logical memory blocks. So the HMC and the ASMI interfaces that are supported on power have what we call logical memory blocks. This is the smallest granular, granularity of memory that you can assign to a VM. Today on Power 9 and earlier, we supported five different sizes, 16 meg through 256 meg. And we looked again at the call home data and 97% of all these servers are running with the largest LMB size. That's what we default to for the longest time. It's only if we have a very, very small memory footprint would we actually use anything other than 256 meg. Um, the LMB side is really a trade-off that customers may make between the granularity of the assignment of memory and how many LMBs they have to manage. Um, as you know, our systems have gotten larger and larger. And if you do the math, a 64 terabyte VM requires a quarter of a million of these individual LMBs to manage that much memory. And it's, it's really getting out of hand for the operating system to try and manage all this. So um, going forward, we're, we're, going, we're looking at larger LMB sizes. So in Power 10, we're, we're going to only main, we're only supporting the 128 megabyte and the 256 uh, megabyte LMB sizes. Um, if you're planning to, for Power 10, if you're planning ahead, the next time, if if you're using a smaller LMB size, the next time that you have a planned outage, I would suggest that you change the LMB size from, from whatever it is to 256 meg. This, it's, you can only do this when the server is powered off. So that's why I'm suggesting a planned outage type time to do this change. Um, the last function that we're dropping is something called workload management groups or EWLM. There was an offering back in 2000, you know, before 2006 offered by IBM that allowed customers to ha have the partitions actually move the memory kind of like DLPA within a group of partitions. 
automatically between the partitions. So we're, there's APIs in the operating system and those APIs would allow them to move them. Um, IBM dropped support for this back in 2006. We looked at the call home data. There's only 26 total VMs across our entire portfolio of customers or only three customers. And so we're also dropping the support. So if, if you're one of the three customers, you know, if you have one of the three customers, they just need to change the workload value to none in the profile. Um, the last slide I wanted to, I'd like to uh, broadcast that we do have a Power VM uh, group. REI and uh, many others contribute to this blog. Uh, blogs, the blogs we publish are new features about what's coming out in Power, how to do some certain feature and stuff like that. Um, the link is there. We also have a discussion form in there and it allows you to ask questions and stuff for from the experts and stuff and, and the community. So a lot of the time people in the community uh, ask questions and they get them answered by other people in the community. So before I pass it on to Hari, um, I'd, are there any questions left for the Power VM section? I don't see any additional ones other than the ones you've answered already. Um, and if people have got questions, just add them to the chat window. I have had some questions regarding the brunch and learn that session that's going on tomorrow. Um, and I've posted uh, details of how you can register for that. The simplifying operations of AIX and IBM I environments with Ansible automation. So the, the link is in the chat window. Um, just shout to me if you need it and can't see it. Um, Pete, I don't see any more questions, so shall we proceed yep. with Harry? Yeah, okay. that'd be great. Thanks, everyone. Thank you very much, Pete. Okay, Harry, I've just made you presenter. There we go. I can see your slide. So continuing on to what uh, Pete mentioned on Power VM, uh, we have a set of enhancements on the HMC as well, aligning with the Power 10 systems, as well as on the Cloud Management Console and Enterprise Pool 2.0. So we'll talk about that now. Uh, we'll see a little bit of, before we get into the enhancements, we see a little bit of uh, HMC hardware release lifecycle, uh, HMC V10, a quick view. And then we'll dive into the Tintin enhancements. And uh, I'll also talk a little bit about Ansible. Uh, I know Jyoti mentioned a session on Ansible tomorrow. Uh, we also have Ansible modules for HMC that have been published. So we'll talk a little bit about that as well. Uh, from a hardware roadmap, uh, so we, we used to have the x86 hardware appliances earlier. Then uh, there was this 7063CR1, which was a power-based appliance, which came out in uh, 2017. And uh, now we have a new appliance 7063CR2, which is also a power-based power appliance. It's a Power9 processor-based appliance. And that GA'd in second quarter of 2021 this year. Uh, now the CR1 has been done end of marketing. Uh, what this means is it, it's end of marketing announce only the HMC software updates and support is still available for CR1. So HMC version 10 that came out aligning with the Power10 systems can be installed on both CR2 as well as CR1, but it cannot be installed on the 7042 or the x86 hardware appliance models, uh, CR9 or CR8 or CR7. Just one second, Harry, sorry. Um, the one person is saying they don't see your slides. I don't know if it's a wider problem than that. I can see the slides. Uh, if uh, I could just ask any of the partitions. Okay, so participants are saying they can see them. Okay. Okay, then it's my problem. Okay, thanks. Even. Back to you, Harry. Okay. Uh, so from my HMC uh, release lifecycle point of view, uh, typically we support each HMC release for two years. Uh, some releases, as you can see, 
uh, I've run more than uh, two years uh, because either the next release has not been done or it's the last release in a specific version. Uh, and one point I wanted to notice within each release of the HMC, say for example, V9 R1 or V9 R2 or V10 R1, the service packs that come out or the maintenance levels that come out supersede each other, which means when V9 R2 came out, it came out with V9 R2 M 950. Then we released 951 V9 R2 M 951. So once 951 is out, all the fixes, security fixes or functional fixes will be delivered on top of the 951 update. So you always have to be on the latest service pack within a release to get the functional fixes or security fixes. Any questions on this? See one question on Ansible for HMC. Yes, it does provide that capability. We'll, we'll, we'll talk about that when we get to the, I'll give more details on that when we get to the Ansible for HMC uh, modules. Uh, HMC version 10, uh, in the, specifically in the context of Power 10, HMC version 10 is required to manage your Power 10 systems. Uh, your existing version 9 HMC uh, cannot manage Power 10 systems. Uh, it will go into version mismatch state if you try to connect your existing version 9 HMC uh, to a Power 10 system. So the minimum level is HMC V10. And depending on the firmware level, like uh, if it is 1010, we'll have to do HMC V10 R1 M1010. And then depending on the future firmware levels, the HMC level has always has to be uh, greater than or equal to the firmware level actually. Other thing is like what Pete mentioned, the N minus two, we follow the same N minus two uh, with managing the power family of systems as well on each HMC version. So with HMC version 10, it will manage power 10, power nine and power eight systems, but it will not manage power seven systems. This is consistent with what we have done in the past when we introduced HMC version 9 aligning with power 9 systems. We dropped support for managing power 6 systems. So version 9 used to manage power 9 power 8 and power 7 systems and now version 10 is managing power 8 power 9 and power 10 systems. And like I said earlier, the version 10 is supported on 7063 CR1 7063 CR2 and virtual HMC appliance models. The virtual HMC on x86 is still supported. Uh, that's not discontinued. So the virtual HMC, uh, you can use it on either x86 or on the power VM as well. So both the models are supported and so updates will be available for both the models for version 10. It's not supported on 7042 machine types. So if you are looking for getting a power 10 system, you need to have either a CR1, CR2, or one of the virtual HMCs. If you have a 7042 machine type, you cannot upgrade to V10, which means you cannot manage a power 10 system with that particular machine. Uh, there were many new features that were introduced in the HMC uh, with the version 10 update that came out in uh, September. Uh, obviously the support for power 10 high-end systems and the associated adapters. We also did a follow-on enhancement for VOS management. So with version 9 uh, release 2, we had enabled some of the functions for validating for VOS maintenance and the ability to take backup uh, from the HM, of the VOS from the HMC. So now we are enhancing that further to allow prepare for VOS maintenance and then few other enhancements. Pete already talked about this, uh, supporting only the 128, 256 MB LMB sizes. So this is specific to power 10 systems. So if you still have power nine and power eight, uh, the ones that are supported on that will still be supported by HMC version 10. But when you connect a power 10 system, it will detect that the power 10 system supports only 128 and 256 and uh, will allow you to set one of those. And just to reiterate what Pete said earlier, we, if you are planning to help in between your existing systems and to a P10 system, uh, please make sure it is set to one of 128 or 256 on your memory region. The other enhancement uh, HMC did was automatically choosing the fastest network for uh, the LPA memory transfer. I'll talk about a little bit uh, in detail. 
also we did a lot of user experience improvements uh, we have been getting feedback from a lot of you and uh, we have also been working with many of you to get uh, usability improvements that can be done on the hmc so we are continuing on our journey to do more usability and performance improvements on the hmc as well uh, allow lpm remote restart when optical device this is another announcement that we delivered uh, the other major announcement is the ax update access key support this is similar to the former update access key uh, support uh, and, and now it has been uh, enabled for AX as well. And in console management, we have addressed some of your RFE request, request for enhancements, uh, ability to configure login retries, uh, suspended time, uh, support for inactivity expiration, also ability to specify HMC location. So if you want to locate uh, very easily where uh, the data center HMC is located, you can use this field to mark a location and data replication for groups and option to alert when schedule operation fails. In terms of VOS management, like I said earlier, we delivered the validate for VOS maintenance earlier uh, with version 9 release to M950. Now we have enhanced it to uh, enable prepare your VOS for maintenance. So if you want to take down your VOS uh, for maintenance purposes or for any other reasons, updates, upgrades, then you can use this to check and also prepare. That means switch the parts, redundant parts, so that your client partitions are not affected when your VOS goes down. Internally, what the prepare does is it validates for redundancy for the virtual storage and network provided by VOS to the helpers. So basically, it checks if there is a redundancy in terms of virtual SCSI or virtual FC adapters, or if the SCA has been set up in a failover mode. If it is SRIOV, it is split across those VOS. All of those, it is checked internally, and it provides you a, a detailed report of that. Then once the validation is successful, it will switch path of the redundant storage network to initiate the failover. As part of this failover, if anything goes wrong, it will also try to roll back as much as possible to the original configuration. And all of this, a very detailed audit report is provided in the HMC GUI uh, when you perform this operation. Apart from this, we also enhanced the backup restore option to take backup restore for shared storage pool config in the HMC. Earlier, we had supported taking a backup, IO backup, as well as a full backup of the VOS from the HMC. Now it has been extended to also take shared storage pool config. And in that same line, the earlier in the 950 release, 950 update, we had supported GUI and REST API for backing up, restoring, or managing your VOS config. Now there is CLI command line also added uh, on your many of your requested command line for automation. So that has also been added, as well as scheduled operations has been enabled to automate taking the VOS config backups in HMC. And additionally, we also added the ability to import or export the backup files to external storage. Harry, there's a related question. Are there any plans to support backup and restore of the iOS to USB stick? Right, the last option that was mentioned there, uh, uh, that was for that purpose. Once you take a backup, you can uh, uh, import or export that, uh, export that into external storage actually. And later, when you want to restore, you can import it from the external storage onto the HMC. And that external storage can be USB attached, is what you're saying. Right. It can be USB, I think it can be uh, TP as well. Okay. Thank you. So th there is another question. Do, you, do we know the name of the commands relevant for backup restore for VIOS and shared storage pool? I will post the HMC uh, commands here in some time. Uh, okay. While we go through the session, I'll post the HMC commands here actually. Okay, thank you. Uh, um, the previous question was related to a bootable backup. Uh, are you okay. okay. So are you referring? Okay. So are you referring to, a, you're not referring to a backup IOS? Then is that correct? Just trying to clarify the question. Sorry, Jack is just saying, asking about a bootable backup when referring to the backup and restore of the iOS to USB stick. Uh, 
Mark, um, perhaps right. Jackie can clarify. Max SB to USB and restore. No, not directly, but if you, I mean, if, if you take the, I think there is an option in the backup IOS, which can be used uh, to, once you take that option and then can be used to restore or reinstall the uh, VOS if required, not a direct MKSSP is my understanding. Okay. Looks like there is one more question, and that looks like a defect number. Uh, I'll have to look up that defect number, but I can I can do that once we are done with this. Uh, once I stop sharing, actually, it looks okay. like some some defect number that is being asked about. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Uh, the next enhancement is the automatically choosing process network. I think Pete talked about this as well. So the one thing that I just wanted to mention is that existing HMC options for migration do provide user overrides for specifying a specific VOS and IP. So that is not taken away. That still works. And if you specify that, that will be still be honored. This is only applicable in the case that where uh, you are not specified any specific MSP IP or MSP to be used, then we will try to make a better selection so that uh, your resource usage is better as well as the LPMs can be faster. Uh, HMC management and security enhancements, uh, like I talked about earlier, the HMC location field uh, has user defined info, uh, CHHMC and LSHMC are the commands uh, for that. Uh, the ability to configure email notification when a scheduled operation failed. Earlier, we had added uh, this feature where when a scheduled operation is, is done, it will send an email, but now we are adding an option where it will send an email only when a scheduled operation fails. Uh, similarly, there is a concept called groups in the HMC. Uh, in the HMC GUI, you can select groups, you can group your systems and partitions in different ways. Data replication is getting enabled for these groups so that if you have set up groups in one HMC, you can replicate that to the other HMC managing similar set of systems. And also the ability to configure suspended time. A lot of you have your own policies to configure this based on the security policies within your organizations. So this has been enabled earlier. These were defaulted in the HMC. It was not configurable. Now we have made them configurable in the HMC. And also we have increased the maximum days for password expiry from 180 to 365 based on a request for enhancement. Uh, AX update keys, uh, the, this is similar to firmware update keys. Again, one COD key per system. Uh, the, the main purpose is to track and ensure AX software maintenance is in place. Uh, so there are some checks that are done for the AX image date against this key. Uh, some of the checks are when AX updates are applied, AX will check uh, during partition boot, including functions like remote restart or live kernel update, AX will check. And during live partition mobility, HMC will check if you are moving to a different system. And these are all warning only. There is no enforcement. That means I mean, your updates will not be blocked. Your installs will not be blocked or your LPM remote restart, LKU, nothing uh, will not be blocked. Uh, this is only a warning actually. Uh, and this is applicable on power 10 servers or later, not on power 9 or power 8. And the uh, UAKs are typically obtained from the IBM ESS as website. Uh, if you want to manually apply them, you can use the existing options on the HMC to apply them. You can also configure automatic update of these keys, similar to how you do former update keys. So if you enable call home, you can go to the transmit service information panel in the HMC. And if you have enabled automatic update for former update access keys, it will also check for any AX update access keys available and automatically update it before it expires. Uh, the usability in terms of uh, HMC UI and usability, yeah, there have been many changes uh, in the 951 update as well as in the 1010 version 10 release. A login page, we have changed some user experience. They also changed user experience for left side navigation icon. So the UI used to have icons without any text. So sometimes it was confusing on what menus uh, were under those icons. So we have made it a little bit clear uh, 
to add labels so that it's easier for you to find a menu. There are also new headers and icons in dashboard uh, for task logs and serviceable events. There is now a quick view of serviceable events in the dashboard view. So if you go to the login page of the HMC, it used to tell what are the number of serviceable events you have on the HMC. But once you log in, you have to go to that specific panel to see the number of serviceable events and what are the new ones. Now we have added that in the HMC GUI itself where you can see a quick view of serviceable events. And if you want to, uh, if, if, if you want to basically act on that, you can still go to the serviceable events uh, panel manager panel. And other improvement that we did was in the HMC UI, when searching for text, it used to do a substring based search. That means some terminologies that you are using for search might not match what the, what the text is already there. So we have uh, made it a more of context based search. Uh, for example, if you search DLPAR, you might not find DLPAR itself directly in the menu item. But now if you search DLPAR, there will be some text that will be shown to you, help text that will be shown to you so that you can find the relevant information. And also we have added a progress status for long running and multi-step operations. So a lot of you in the UI, HMC UI, uh, there was a lot of uh, simplification done such that many operations were done in the, by the HMC in the back end instead of you having to do multiple steps. But sometimes those steps can take some time. So a lot of you had requested it would be good to get some feedback on what is happening or what operations have been uh, performed. So we added that feature also in question 10. And we are continuing to enhance that for other operations also. And one of the other major changes that was done with the version 10 uh, was the code update wizard improvements. So uh, the earlier panel has been replaced with a newer uh, wizard actually. The functionality is the same. Uh, we used to have all these functions, system firmware updates, IO firmware updates, SRA firmware, all of that. But the flow was not sometimes intuitive. That means these were not directly visible. So you have to get into some panels and then do some actions before you can find where I can do the IO adapter for more updates. Now we have made it a little simpler so that all these options are available as a menu and then you can easily use these menus to update system IO or SRI worry. Any questions, any other questions? Yes, there's uh, one question that came up. Uh, red book, will there be a red book of HMC version 10 and VS, VIOS new function in the near future, or are there any good reference documents? I I am not aware of any red books in plan specifically for HMC version 10, but there was a red book for the E1080 system, which included information about some of this HMC version 10 features. And we also have a couple of blogs that we have published, so we can we can share those links uh, uh, here in a bit. Great, thanks. I'll post those links under the replay um, section as well. For, for right. right. So we, I mean, we published. I think Pete flashed before at the end of his presentation that uh, we have a LinkedIn group where we publish. Uh, a lot of blogs, right? So that's actually get published in IBM communities. And there we publish a lot of blogs, blogs actually a lot of good material is out there. So maybe I'll give the link to the uh, page and then you can access those blogs. Yes, that would be really helpful. Thank you. Um, a couple more questions. Is the, yeah, yep, I'm seeing those. What is the upgrade path to HMC uh, 10? Uh, minimum level from which you can upgrade. So, this is also typically we have maintained uh, N minus two, so we can come from V9 R1 or V9 R2 to HMC version 10. When showing the menu to update firmware, it would be good to include the CLI, as I believe many people script this work as a suggestion from Greg. Okay, we'll we'll look at how that can be enhanced, uh, Greg. The the command usually is UPDLIC. That's the command that does all these options actually. So, and, and the command, that command has all the options for system firmware, IO firmware, all of those updates. Uh, it's not different commands, but the options within the commands are a little different. So we'll see how uh, this can be enhanced so that some tooltip or anything can be given in the UI uh, to uh, give you a CLI command format. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, 
then i think we talked about the ansible modules so we have started putting out ansible modules for hmc uh, from last year uh, we started with hmc update up, update upgrades uh, password policy and then we have modules for uh, creating new partitions logical partition creation uh, so we we have added support to create partitions with virtual storage virtual network physical io uh, npiv shared processor pool all of that so you can provision new vms using the ansible modules for uh, hmc uh, and we also have modules for changing your partition state uh, hmc updating your hmc upgrading your hmc and also some of the system actions like powering on of your system system settings like the memory region size all to create even a full system partition if you want to and uh, in the fourth quarter later in december we will we are planning to publish a couple of more modules uh, ansible modules for doing lpm via the hmc as well as creating and installing the vos so that's the current plan that we are looking at and we welcome any feedback on what ansible modules uh, you would be uh, interested in uh, so that we can uh, evaluate that accordingly uh, focusing on these three main categories systems management virtualization appliance management uh, in the future we are also looking at modules for uh, firmware upgrades ansible modules for doing firmware upgrades uh, via the HMC as well, uh, apart from the existing modules. So I'll, I'll, I'll pass there to see if uh, any feedback or did I address that question earlier on Ansible modules for a uh, new provisioning or any, any specific feedback on Ansible modules that you would like to see uh, using HMC? There's nothing at the moment, but um, we'll, we'll monitor the chat and uh... I know that the PowerVug subscribers are, are not shy people, so I'm sure you will you will get some uh, suggestions coming your way. Okay, sure. Okay, then we'll move on to uh, Cloud Management Console or CMC in short. I think we had a session earlier this year, a detailed session uh, on Cloud Management Console and Enterprise Pools. So I just wanted to give one uh, overview uh, for if, if anyone is not aware of this, but uh, the cloud management console is a software as a service offering. It runs uh, in the IBM cloud. There is no on-prem installation. Uh, the only setup that is required on-prem or in your HMCs is to start a process called Cloud Connector, which already ships with the HMC. And once that is started, uh, there is a connection, one way outbound connection that is established from the HMC uh, to CMC running in IBM cloud. And there is no need to manually sync. It automatically collects inventory and utilization only. So the data that is collected is primarily inventory and utilization information, which is then sent to CMC for processing with CMC. Uh, data is all the all the data transmission is done securely. Uh, the data is encrypted at rest as well. And uh, we provide multiple apps with the uh, uh, with the CMC. Currently, five different apps. Uh, inventory, aggregated inventory view across all systems, HMCs. Capacity monitoring provides aggregated performance views. Uh, the one nice capability with this capacity monitoring app is that it allows you to set thresholds and get alerts and notifications. So if you want to notify, get notified when your system utilization exceeds, say, 80%, instead of uh, logging in and monitoring in the HMC or CMC, you can just set a threshold and get an email or a text notification uh, easily. Uh, similarly, log trends, it shows uh, values of LPM, partition lifecycle operations that are happening uh, on the on your systems. Uh, patch planning provides uh, patch compliance reports. It, that means it shows what is the current levels of the different subsystems, be it HMC, uh, VOS, firmware, OS, all of that. And then it also provides info about what is the latest update or upgrade that are available. It doesn't allow you to update itself. Uh, it doesn't directly allow you to update from the CMC. So the, the, the plan management that we're talking about, maintenance plan management that we're talking about is more of a workflow where you can create a patch plan saying you want to update your system, say uh, system X into specific formal level on a specific time, and then send an email uh, to your team members so that everyone is in agreement and they know that an update is going to happen at that particular time. The actual update or upgrade itself has to be done using existing tools. This, uh, the next one is the enterprise pools or uh, what we call it as power private cloud with shared utility capacity. 
So CMC is required for using Enterprise Pools 2.0. Uh, CMC does all the management for Enterprise Pools 2.0, uh, starting from monitoring the utilization, uh, metering, billing, all of that. So this allows you to uh, share resources very seamlessly across multiple systems. This is an extension in the capabilities that uh, Power Platform had for a long time. Uh, the capacity on demand, then we came out with uh, elastic capacity on demand, then Power Enterprise Pools 1, now Power Enterprise Pools 2, which provides a complete Power Private Cloud experience with seamless multi-system resource sharing. Uh, it's the shared utility capacity of across Power 9 and Power 10 systems. So now once the E1080 came out, that will also be supported by Enterprise Pools 2.0. I see a couple of questions. What is CMC managing the performance monitoring of uh, VOL per set? Yes, the CMC capacity monitoring app basically uses it uses the information that the HMC performance and capacity monitoring collects from hypervisor and uh, virtualized server. So as long as you have your LPAR is completely virtualized using virtual IO, you will also get virtual IO metrics, virtual storage and virtual network metrics as well. And all of that is aggregated at the CMC level from the different HMCs. Okay, and there is another question, which is considering dynamic yeah. changes, DLPAR reflected on profiles, is there a plan to remove the concept of profiles? Yeah. Right, I'm, I'm just, yeah. So there is no current plans to remove the concept of uh, profiles, but but the newer capabilities that we are adding more and more, we are going towards uh, partition level capabilities where uh, it, it, you, you act on the partition itself directly. But there is no current plans to remove the concept of profiles completely. Okay, I think another is, question. Yeah. Yes, I'll to do use, with our enterprise uh, pools and right. um, CMC requirement. Now, the, the CMC is required only for Enterprise Pools 2.0, uh, not the Power Enterprise Pools that, that was available earlier. So if you are using Enterprise Pools 2.0 or Power Private Cloud, then CMC is required. The existing Power Enterprise Pools where uh, we used to call it as the mobile COD, uh, the static and the mobile uh, active, static activations and the mobile COD where uh, capacity can be transferred across system, that works at, at, at uh, uh, as it is today. And you don't need to make any changes to that. And and if you power are using 10, PAP, sorry, yeah, go ahead. So I was just going to say that um, it, it isn't a condition of the power 10, it is a condition of using enterprise pools 2.0 that you must have cloud management okay. console, uh, exactly. whether you're using it with power 9 or power 10, right? Exactly, exactly. So it's it's when you use enterprise pools 2.0, then CMC becomes a prerequisite, irrespective of whether it is on power 9 or power 10. The existing Elastic COD or uh, the Power Enterprise pools, where you can even uh, have the systems managed by different HMCs, those don't require CMC. Those work as it is with the HMC itself. Sometimes we refer. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. Sometimes we refer to those as Power Enterprise pools 1.0. PEP 1.0 does right, not need right. CMC. Just to be clear. Um, yes, exactly, exactly. Because I think we, we earlier used to call this for enterprise pools, but once this 2.0 came in, we have started referring that as 1.0. That's right, that's right. Um, and so there is a question the other way. If they, if somebody is using Power Enterprise Pools 1.0, can they use CMC? Yeah, yeah. There is no, uh, there is no blocking like that. You can still use CMC for monitoring uh, your systems. Uh, if you're if you're using power enterprise ports 1.0 and and indeed as mike has just said you can use it even if you're not using enterprise pools of any sort right correct correct so the inventory capacity monitoring log aggregation patch planning are not tied to the enterprise pools uh, so they can be used for any system uh, irrespective of whether you are using pools 2.0 or not so the only app that is really related to pools 2.0 implementation is that uh, enterprise pools 2.0 app so the other four apps can be used outside of the pools. Thank you. I think good that's questions. it. For the... Very good questions. So, so hurry. I think this is now that CMVC defect you need to tell them about. So stop sharing. Yeah, yeah. I, I have some more. Yeah, no, I have one more slide on it. And yeah, not it. Okay. So some of the CMC changes that have come in uh, into 2021. 
I said we have expanded CMC deployment to London and uh, Sydney regions. Earlier it was supported on US South and Frankfurt, IBM Cloud. Now it is also supported on London and Sydney. So when you sign up for CMC, you can specify which region you want your CMC instance to be hosted. Also, we improved the scalability. Uh, we are now supporting 2000 partitions per pool uh, on the CMC and also supporting 1000 partitions for HMC when used in combination with CMC. Uh, there is a minimum HMC level that is required because there are some changes that went into the HMC to enable that as well. At the second quarter, uh, metering for SLES was enabled, uh, SLES Linux was enabled. Uh, capability uh, to uh, schedule email notification for usage statement. So if you're using enterprise pools, if you want to know your monthly usage statement, you can uh, enable this capability. And also there were additional details for HMC itself that were added in the inventory view. The third quarter release primarily was focused on enabling Power 10 systems uh, and also enabling CMC and enterprise pools, both for enabling Power 10 systems. So you can have both your Power 9 and Power 10 systems in the same pool. They need to be of the same machine type, which means E980 high-end high systems uh, can be in the same pool, in the same machine type. It's uh, the system type itself not the actual machine type so e980 and e1080 can be in the same pool uh, similarly the scale out can be in the same pools mid-range can be in the same pools but you cannot mix a e1080 with the s922 or s924 so if you have a power 9 e980 you can put the power 10 e1080 in the same pool as the power 9 e980 and we also enabled some APIs for CMC where you can use those APIs to get utilization data. And if you want to do chargeback internally within your organization for the different business line, that can be done using these APIs. And we are also now identifying Red Hat Core OS as a separate Linux type uh, for utilization purposes. There will be more uh, announcements that will come in. Uh, CMC follows a continuous delivery model. That means we roll out updates for functions and fixes continuously. Uh, security fixes are all taken care. Uh, we follow the same uh, security process for other products, strict security process that IBM uh, follows for all products. So security fixes are all automatically rolled out. You don't have to keep updating. Uh, the only thing that needs update is the HMC, uh, depending on any fixes that are delivered on the HMC. Those are the slides that I had. Uh, the one question I think, yeah, correct. Uh, HMC, any kind of HMC can be used uh, to establish connection with CMC. Uh, it's it's the other way. The HMC initiate the connection uh, and as a outbound connectivity, uh, not not the CMC establishing connection. But yeah, uh, virtual appliance or CR1 or CR2 uh, with V9 or 2 should work. Okay. So, I think I had a couple of other questions to be answered. The, let me look up that blocks yeah. first. While while Harry's doing that, let me just remind you, or not remind you, in fact, inform you about a session that's coming up in December. I haven't yet put this up on the Power um, Bug info page uh, because it's hot of the presses only. Um, had this confirmed recently. So on the 8th of December, same time, so 2 p.m. to 3.30 p.m. UK time GMT, uh, same time as today's session on the 8th of December, we've got Tim Rowe and he'll be covering IBM I Navigator for I, A Whole New World, um, along with Laura Powell, uh, who will be giving an in-depth view of how to look at performance in new ways using performance data investigator PDI. So it's a combined event um, with uh, IBM, I, or IBM Navigator for I, the new look navigator. So it, was, it will be mostly demos um, and also with an in-depth look at PDI. So I hope you can join us on the 8th of December. I will send information out about this session along with the replay I send for today's session. But watch out for it. Okay. Um, so, Harry, you've got um, a few th things you've posted. Um, 
the link to the blogs and I will include the link to the blogs um, with the replay information so everyone can access that and the commands as well I'll make note of those and add those right right that this command information is there in that blog that I recently put out as well on the HMC v10 enhancements that okay. is there just one update to earlier statement the, the copy of the backups uh, we have supported sftp and nfs uh, so far not usb we'll try to look at that as a future enhancement okay and i think that let me look up that other issue related to that feature the, the defect number okay let me see if there is a related defect number because this defect number is not accurate just yeah, somebody moment. posted in the chat window, but um, yeah, even Pete said that was not an accurate number. Yeah, just give me a moment, please. Sure, no worries. So if anyone's got any other questions that um, they have in their mind, add them to the chat window. There were a few questions to myself about the session, tomorrow's brunch and learn session. Um, so I have posted the link to it in the chat window. And uh, also um, uh, when I send the replay information out for today's session, at the bottom of that email will be links to useful resources and it will be in there. So watch out for that if you don't, if you haven't got hold of it as yet. Uh, if there is a uh, case number that is associated with that defect, I think that would be helpful to look it up or you can send me a mail, uh, Christoph. Uh, my mail ID should be there in the slide deck uh, with that case number so uh, I can help answer that. Thank, thank you, Harry. Yes, so if, um, if you can do that, Christoph, that would be great. Um, I don't see any more questions. Um, so far. So I just let me thank Harry and Pete for taking us through that. Uh, a whole host of new enhancements, lots of different features, both in Power VM, the HMC and um, CMC, so and Enterprise Pools too. So I uh, hope that you found that useful and um, hopefully we can um, see you join us in the next session in December. Uh, with IBMI and Navigator and PDI. One more question that's come up. Um, does HMC version 10 support management of HMCs? Um, Not quite sure what I understand you clarify the question. Right, that's what I was trying to say. When you say management of HMCs or, or any specific systems you're looking for, or HMC does not manage another HMC directly. HMC can manage AC922, correct, but it cannot manage a CR1 or CR2 on its own, if that's what you're looking for. Okay. Right. So, no, that, that support is not very long. Uh, the, the Java one has not been removed yet. Uh, we are working on that. Uh, that should be available in a future update. Uh, you still need that uh, uh, to be opening uh, V terms remotely. Okay, so just for the purposes of the recording, uh, the dependency of Java has not yet been removed for opening console sessions, but working on it. Okay, I am going to stop the recording there, um, and then we can stay on for another couple of minutes if uh, there are any more questions. Thank you so much, everyone, and thanks to Harry and Pete.